bring it out for the Lord and let's think about him been a while since some of you been here just because of the snow days and different things like that and so we're going to have church today we need the Lord to blow in and blow up amen we need him to show up and to come in and change, change our life we need it from him we can do that through praising him through worshiping him, through praying, through the preaching of the word of God, through the fellowship of the saints. And that's what God, why God uh, started the church for many different reasons. But the number one reason was that though he could inspire us through the word of God to live for him, to live with him, to live with our families and to tell the world about what happened and how they can have them. And so that's what the church's plan is. Let's sing it out for the Lord today. We've got our theme song. I hope that you'll think about the words. God has never changed. God is still in control and he is still doing stuff and still working through his people. And we need to remember that. So let's sing it out for him today. church this morning. Thank God. He's the God that never changes. Thank God for the cross. Amen. At the cross, at the cross. Hymn number 121. Find that hymn book. Turn over there. Smile. Lift up your voice. Sing to the Lord this morning. Here we go. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die. And the 
save myself. Come on, brother. Because I wouldn't be able to. Yep, that's right. And neither would you. He sent his son. He does it all. Amen. Yeah. I'm glad we're in a done religion and not a do religion. Yes. Yep. And so I ain't got to do anything. Ain't. That's a good word right I there. Ain't got to. But I ain't got to do anything. Jesus did it all. Saved. Save 353, brother JR. 353. Saved. Saved. <laughs> Here we go on the first verse. I found a friend who is all to me. His love is ever true. I love to tell how he lifted me and what his grace can do for you. up sing loud on that chorus on the end of there listen it says save to new life sublime life now is sweet listen thank god for heaven and what's coming then but jesus makes life right now great he makes it worth living right here and so think about that sing it out on the second verse he saves me from every sin and harm secures my soul each day Saved people in here. 363. Amen. 363 saved by the blood. Amen. 363. This is another one. Just give you the chance to open up those lungs and sing it out. Amen. <laughs> sing from here. It's called the diaphragm. Right, Brother Michael? Brother Michael was taking voice lessons in college. And so we're singing from our diaphragm. Fill it up with air and then let it all out your mouth. Amen. 
I have no idea if that's a professional lesson or not, but you just got one on how to sing loud. Here we go on the first verse. Saved by the blood of the crucified one, now ransom from sin and the new work begun. Sing praise to the Father and praise to the Son. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. church. Uh, good to see my father-in-law let out of COVID uh, jail. Amen. We had my nephew and niece there and they she she tested positive. He's taking care of her for her daughter. And two weeks up, man, they're back in church serving the Lord. Amen. And glad he's here. And then good to have John here, man. John was in the hospital last week for a couple of days. We prayed for him Thursday and glad he's here also and doing well. And we're just going to have a great time in the, in the house of God. Amen. I'll tell you a little story if I could. Uh, we were driving back last night from the couple's uh, activity. This has nothing to do with anything. It's just a good story. So uh, we are driving back from the couple's activity, and we pulled in to get gas. And, uh, man, the guy, he's just a great guy. He starts washing our windows in Jersey. I mean, he's, he's washing that window. And somehow the wiper went on while he's washing the window. And so he stood back, and I just put my head down like, oh, no, no. I'm trying to turn it off. And then Kara is in the driver's seat laughing <laughs> hysterically. And everybody in the van was like, no, no, you ain't got the microphone, man. And, and uh, everybody in the back is laughing. And I'm, I'm embarrassed. I'm like, man, this poor guy, he's trying to clean the window. We're, we're. And finally, he just walks away, throws the thing back in the bucket and gives up. And I'm like, ah, that is terrible. And so I had, I, and then Brother Jason's like, don't give him a track. And so, and I'm like, well, we got the van that says Liberty Baptist Church on it. So then I reached in my pocket, pulled out $5 and a track, and I'm like, Listen, I'm so sorry my wife did that to the wipers. And I uh, gave him the track, amen. So you guys pray for him. And uh, he, uh, he was happy. But he, he loved the track, I'm sure. But the, the, yeah, he's waving it. So it was good. Uh, but listen, don't turn your wipers on when somebody's cleaning your window unless 
that's the homeless person. You didn't ask to clean the window, amen. Yeah. And then you're like, turn the wife on. But uh, praise the Lord. So it's good to be in church. Sometimes just laughing at some stuff is funny. And so uh, I'm thankful for all of you today. And uh, it's a blessing. And we're going to have a great, great day in God's house. We just have to pray. And uh, remember, we got to focus on the Lord here. Uh, I, you know, I don't know what you came to do. I've said it before. My mom and dad's old church years ago, a little country church in Arkansas, they had like six people in the choir had like 30 people in the church and they get up in that choir and they had that piano. They had a bunch of special effects and they had a few little beats in it, different things. And, and they go, I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. And that was those six, six people that were like a hundred years old going, I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And so listen, if you weren't thinking about it, Think about it now, man. I've come to God's house. It's a good place to be. It's the first day of the week. We get God early in the week, and we take him with us all week long, and we come to worship and praise. And so every song that is sung is sung for God, but it's also sung for our benefit to get us thinking about the Lord. And so uh, I always just, the best thing I do to get closer to the Lord is think about where I'd be if he had not come by. Uh, and I'm glad he came by, and I, and I get used to it sometimes, just like the rest of us. Let's not be used to church. Let's get let's get the Lord in here, and we do that by praising Him, singing Him down, praying Him down, and, and responding to the Spirit of God. And let God work on your spirit today, and we all need it, Amen. In the in the midst of everything, uh, stuff going on, and uh, people were talking about the news yesterday in the van, and I can't believe things happening around here, carjackings and all kinds of stuff. Uh, but I'm thank God I turned that news off. I hadn't watched it, maybe watched it 10 minutes in this in 2021. 10 minutes of the news. Can you believe that? Your pastor is like, that's unbelievable for me. I I've, I've watched, I used to watch 10 minutes of the news in five minutes. All right, that was gone. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. It sounded pretty good. The guy in my head's like, this is gonna be funny. Say it to him. They're gonna all laugh. Javon's gonna love it. And then Javon's like, Yeah, yeah, my bad. I tell them, Brother John, now listen, we're going to talk to some of the older folks in here, and if you don't agree, just just act like you do. So we say my, people say my bad, right? But back in the 80s, when I invented the saying, it was my bag, my bag. And so I looked it up on the internet, and it says it back in the 80s. It was a popular saying, and somewhere along the line, I think one of those TV shows changed it to my bag. So we're going to all go back to my bag. So Brother brother Mike, you pray for him because he's getting real close to God shinning some she bears over to get him. He doesn't believe me. I don't. I don't. It, not that he, the, part, the hard part is that he doesn't believe me. The hard part is having to listen to the accent and not believe it. I don't. And so praise God. Anyways, let's go Lord in prayer. And get back to what I was going to say. Let's just focus on him. It's going to be really good if we do that. Listen, if you come to church and get God and focus on God, you can leave here saying, man, that was a good church service. If you come and focus on yourself and just tune it all out, you leave here going, I don't know why everybody likes this place. I mean, it's just the way it is. The devil can do that to you, man. Any day he can do that. And he can do that to the best of us. And he's done it to me many times. As the preacher and pastor, I've walked out here going, man, it was all right. I don't know why we, you know, we don't know why I care. You know, just a bad attitude. And the devil does that to us. And my, my flesh does that to me. Uh, and the world has a small part in it. Amen. But that's the enemy. So let's pray right now. Let's ask God to meet with us. One other thing. Let's talk about Brother Jason's a blessing. We drove by his car last night and it was on. And I said, oh, you got that electric start? And I said, brother, I want to get one of those for my truck. And he goes, you have one. And I go, no, I don't. And he goes, yeah, it comes with your truck. And so then he gave me this little tip. I went in there, hit this button, and the truck just started right up. I thought, well, praise God. So that's awesome. But hey, if anybody wants to let your start, but Jason, but Jason can wheel it in for your car. Hey, I almost went to the place I paid for it. They would have been like, yeah, we'll take your $250, and we fixed it for you. <laughs> and that would have been great. All right, let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for letting us smile. Thank you for the good things you do in our life, the little things that you do that are such a blessing to us. Help us not miss the joy that you can bring at a gas station, the, the happiness you can bring in a church service. And Lord, we need that, Lord. And I'm thankful for the people of God 
that have uh, have a great spirit today and have lifted my spirit already, Lord. And I needed it. You know I needed it when I walked in the place, God. Thank you for what you do. Bless the singing. May it get a hold of our hearts. May we yeah. think about you and may we worship and pray and talk to you and have a service, God. We love you. We need you. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. I am thankful for the cross this morning, and I've been reading a book lately uh, just about Christianity, and if we're not careful, we begin to think that Christianity is about uh, God sent his son to make us happy. God sent his son to give us all of these benefits, and thank God for the benefits, but that wasn't the point of Jesus' sacrifice. Uh, he died on that cross to save us of our sins, to save the world, and I thank God for the happiness and the joy that comes along with that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But that makes the point of Christianity me. And the point of Christianity is not me. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I'm thankful for the cross this morning. And so let's get our minds on that. And uh, man, it's, it's about nothing else but what the Lord Jesus did on the cross for all of us. It's not conservative or liberal, however they're defined. It's not about interpretation or the judgment of the mind. It's the opposite of politics, power or prestige. It's about a simple message and whether we believe it's still the cross. It's still the blood of Calvary that cleanses sin and sets the captive free. It's still the name, the name of Jesus that has power to save the lost. It's still the cross. We can water down theology and preach a word to suit our needs. Or we can justify sweet, subtle lies that are wrapped in noble deeds. We can alter our convictions to adapt to social whims. But we cannot change the gospel or the truth contained within it. Still the cross. It's still the blood of Calvary that cleanses sin and sets the captive free. It's still the name, the name of Jesus that is power to save the lost. It's still the cross. Though some may say it's man's religion or ancient history, the cross of Jesus still remains the price for sin that sets us free. It's still the cross. It's still the blood of Calvary that cleanses sin and sets the captive free. It's still the name, the name of Jesus that has power to save the lost. It's still the cross. It's still the cross. I've 
been justified, satisfied. Oh, I have it all, so I rest my case at the cross. Don't feel sorry for me when you see I'm in need. There's a judge who grants mercy and love. All my burdens he lifts, all my sin he forgives. Every trial is won through the blood. So I rest my case at the cross. champion my cause. I've been justified, satisfied. Oh, I have it all. So I rest my case at the cross. In the My case will be heard. I've been justified, satisfied. Oh, I have it all. So I rest my case at the cross. I wonder how many of us in here could say that tonight, today. I've been justified, satisfied. Oh, I have it all. There's a lot of Christians that would not be able to, they, they've been justified, but boy, they're not satisfied. And they don't believe they have it all. They believe they need more, want more, want what others have. And you know what that is? That's not the peace of God give, been, that's been given to. And God, God extends that peace to every believer. And he does that through a relationship and through being filled with his spirit and not with your own. And a lot of Christians run around with their own spirit. And, and that's why they're not satisfied in life. That's why they bicker. That's why they're upset. That's why they fret. And that's why they don't have the peace of God. And, and listen, that's a pretty big statement in that, that, that song. I thought, about, I thought, man, I've been justified, satisfied, and I have it all. I, I was telling the lady uh, uh, last night. At the, at the, we went out to this place and Brother Charlie Clark was there and he did the little, did the message for our couples and when he left, he said, I don't have a track, can you get a track to that bartender on the way out? And I said, yeah, I'll, get, I'll find a track and give it to her. And I looked over and it's, a, it's an older lady, not, I shouldn't say that, I don't know how she was, but she looked maybe older than me, probably not, but most people I think older than me now are younger than me, so it's weird. But uh, I look over at her and so I go over and I said, ma'am, I want to give this to you, and I hope that you'll read it. She wasn't standing behind the bar. She was in front of the bar. So I thought she was just out cleaning the table. And then I, I said, uh, God changed my life 18 years ago. I, I was a bartender. And, I, and that's what I did, and I loved it. I said, but God came down. She goes, I said, so when I see a bartender, I want to I have, I have a burden for them. I want to give this to them. She goes, I'm not a bartender. And I said, oh, okay. I said, well, I don't think I'm any better. She goes, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I don't have big problems like that. And she goes, you don't, I don't, you don't really have to. And I said, no, no, I'm not giving you this because you have big problems. I'm giving you this because God changed my life. And um, when I was 11 years old, I started getting high, and I started going to jail at 13, and I started getting in trouble. My life went spiraled out of control, and at 31, I was a bartender. I said, and I was tired of life. And, and, and then she kind of started opening up. I said, well, I hope you'll read that. Hey, listen, you know what I was saying to her in a sense? I've been justified. 
I'm satisfied. And I made that statement to her. I said, I have a, I have a, my, that was my wife. She was there, you married? So that's my wife, which went in the bathroom. And I said, I had a, I had a wonderful family. I have a 13-year-old son, a 12-year-old daughter, a 9-year-old daughter, and I have it all. I'm living the dream now. Uh, and you say, well, if I had your life, I'd be living the dream. No, no. If you're saved, uh, everybody's life in here is a dream life. But you got to gotta get the Lord and think about him. And, and so I hope that these aren't just words to you. I'm afraid they are for lots of folks. Not that I'm trying to judge you, but I believe that's Christianity as a whole right now throughout the world that some people just don't see it, don't understand it, don't get it. Boy, you get, you get down with the Lord for a little bit. And you start spending some real time with him, some real time in the word, real time on your knees. Maybe you're not even talking, but you're just down there just, just, just thinking about the Lord and, and letting him speak to you. Prayer is not just you speaking to God, it's him speaking to you. And you get down there and you start having that real relationship with him, and he'll, he'll open these songs up for you. And he'll say, you know, that, that's me right there. That, I am. That is who, who, who God wants me to be. And so praise the Lord for the song. I like it. I like these guys singing. trying to offend you but it's I love the Lord and that's what we do every year been doing every year for, for for a long time and folks do sacrifice and we I think last year I don't even remember what we had last year I know uh, the year before or last year thirty thousand dollars came in and and you say was that that was a sacrifice I think it was I think it was a blessing uh, to the Lord uh, that's what it does you get around to God for a week and uh, and you spend your time here and then let the Lord speak to you and it will change your life amen and he'll help you. If you don't want your life changed, you, you can't do it, but he'd love to do it, okay? And so let's go to the next one. If there is another one, let's go ahead and have the ushers come forward. Thankful for these men. Let's pray for the offering. There are three ways to give, actually four, a couple of ways online. You can see behind me. And then you can also give in the offering bowl here this morning. You can put it in the boxes back there. We have envelopes to get a record of your visit if you would like that. And we'd like to help you with that if we can. And uh, let's be faithful to the Lord. Been seeing a lot of missionaries, uh, and praise God to being able to help a lot of missionaries with our missions money. And that is a wonderful thing. And other folks that are giving more, just stepping up to the plate and giving more is a real blessing uh, as far as the missions. Because God's heartbeat is to reach the world. And what we do here at Liberty is we send money, thousands of dollars every month, to people overseas to try to help them to reach their Jerusalems and even here in America and different places and church planters. And so that is a wonderful thing. And uh, uh, praise God for that. We were uh, on the live stream Thursday with our missionary in Croatia. And I, I asked Brother Lowry, I said, Brother Lowry, do you have a need? And he said, well, uh, and he told us a prayer need. And I said, no, do you have any other needs? You know, talking to a missionary, I want to know if he needs some money or something. And he said, uh, his son was coming back to uh, to, the, to our country here for a couple of weeks to go to youth camps. He's only 15 years old. He did ask us to pray for his son, uh, Lucas. Pray for Lucas. He's 15. He's over in Croatia. And he's struggling a little bit because he's one of the only teenagers in the church. Everybody speaks a foreign language, doesn't know anybody. And so put Lucas on your prayer list and pray for him. Then he said, you know, he needed to, he's trying to send him back to go to camp, plane tickets and all that. And I said, well, how much would all of it cost? And he told us it was $1,200, and the church was able to send $1,200. Uh, and, and, and then amazingly, someone in our church stepped up and sent in $1,200. And so God, God's a blessing. God knows what he's doing. And we want to help people, uh, and we want to live for the Lord. So that's what the offerings are for missions and then for our church to tithe. Amen. And so let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for the goodness of God that, that you give to us and how wonderful it is to to know the, the son that set us free, yeah. to know about that cross and the power of it, the, the goodness of God in our life to realize that you never change and that we can hold on to you, the, the unchanging hand. And, and God, I pray that today as we give in this offering, we would do it heartily as we give online, as we give in the box, whatever we do, uh, we would honor you and worship you with it, Lord. Thank you for the visitors. Thank you for everyone that's here. Bless this now in Jesus' name. Amen.
go ahead and dismiss the nursery. Forgot about that. Yeah, let's go ahead and dismiss the junior church. Man, I keep forgetting about them too. Sorry. They didn't forget. They're like, uh, come on now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Pastor, don't forget us. Don't forget us, Pastor. He's forgot us. How many of your moms, he's like, they're nudging you going, what's he doing? Yeah. Yeah, my, mine especially. What about yours, Jessica? No, they don't say nothing? Sometimes, yeah. Good. Well, I'm glad they want to go up there. Brother J.R. gives them a good Bible lesson today. Brother Michael's preaching. Uh, and uh, so pray for Brother Michael. I came home last night. He was there at our house. And I uh, came home and he wasn't there. And I'm like, where's he at? They go, he's up on the third floor studying for tomorrow. And I thought, yeah, that's a blessing. Man. My Brother Michael's something. And so I pray the Lord for him. Let's all stand and grab hymn books again. Hymn number seven. Hymn number seven. Blessed be the name of Hymn number seven, sing it out, here we go on the first verse, all praise to him who reigns above, come on now sing, majesty supreme, who gave his son for man to die, that he might man redeem, blessed be the name, blessed be Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. His name above all names shall stand. Exalted more and more. At God the Father's own right hand, where angel hosts adore. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Redeemer, Savior, friend of man, was ruined by the fall. Thou hast gave thy salvation's plan, for thou hast died for all. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. His name shall be the counselor, the prince of peace, of all earth's kingdoms conqueror, whose reign shall never cease. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. All right, let's take our Bibles today and we're going to look at Deuteronomy chapter number one. Deuteronomy chapter number one. And when you find your place there, if you'll please stand. In Deuteronomy chapter number one, already standing, praise God, how about that? You guys already knew, how about, how about that? Deuteronomy, and if you need a Bible, there are Bibles there in the pew, I'd ask you to look at them, uh, and then so, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, amen, fourth book in the Bible, fifth book in the Bible, I knew that, you know, I'm sitting here thinking in my mind while I'm talking to you, I'm stalling you, I'm going, all right, fifth book in the Bible, Fourth, fifth, you know how it goes sometimes, amen. And so, uh, Deuteronomy chapter number one, and we're going to read quite a bit here. I think it'd be good for us. And so, let's look at let's look at verse number one. Deuteronomy chapter number one, verse number one. The Bible says, "These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel." On this side, Jordan, in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea between Paran and Tophel and Laban and Hazaroth and Dizahab. 
And I want to, I'm not going to continue reading right there. We're going to skip down a little bit. But Deuteronomy is a book that is going to summarize uh, everything that has happened to the children of Israel uh, when they came out of Egypt. Uh, they were there. They were in bondage. They were down in Egypt for about 400 years. And they were in bondage for uh, the last part of it, in great bondage to Pharaoh. And, and, they, and they cried to God, and, and God already had a plan. He'd already put the plan together 400 years before with Abram and Abraham. And he said, you know, we're going to bring you into the land of Canaan one day. And through a long, a, a lot of the events that happened, Moses and Aaron, his brother, they were able to go to Pharaoh. And God did the, 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 the wonders in Egypt and brought them out. And by his mighty hand, the Bible says they brought him out. God brought them out. And, and, and they, they, they did a lot of things. And they, they rebelled against God. And they, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years because they didn't believe God. And God was going to take them in in 11 days. He's going to take them into the promised land in 11 days. And they spent 40 years wandering out there because they didn't listen to God. Many people call it the church in the wilderness. And that's okay. And, and I like that. Well, uh, uh, Moses is kind of summarizing some things of what God was going to do. Look at verse number eight. Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and their seed after them. He's, he's talking about the land that God was going to give them, Canaan land. And, and, and so many things happened. And look at verse number uh, 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 13. It says, Take you wise men and understanding and known among your tribes, and I will make them rulers over you. And so Moses is, is telling them what God had told him. We're going to go into Canaan. It's going to be great. We're going to set up some people to help rule the two million. They're going to help with counseling and different things. And then verse 14, it says, And he answered me and said, This thing which thou hast spoken is good for us to do. And so they listened to Moses. And, they, and that's a good thing. They were listening and God was moving. And then it says in verse number 19, And when we departed from Horeb, we went through all that great and terrible wilderness, which ye saw by the way of the mountain of the Amorites, and the Lord your God, as the Lord your God commanded us, and we came to Kadesh Barnea. And I said unto you, Ye are coming to the mountain of the Amorites, and the Lord God that the Lord God, which the Lord our God doth give unto us. Behold, the Lord thy God hath set the land before thee. Go up and possess it, as the Lord God of thy fathers has said unto thee. Fear not, neither be discouraged. So he says, I've got the land for you. I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to fight the battle. He's already parted the Red Sea. He's already plagued Egypt many different times and showed them the wonders and miracles that he could do. And he's going to allow them to go in and possess this land. That was his plan. Verse 22, and you came near unto me, every one of you. And said, we will send men before us, and they shall search, out, search us out the land and bring us word again by what way we must go up, into what cities we shall come. Now the children of Israel have decided, God said, now it's very important to listen to this, God said, go in and possess it, I've already got it for you, I've done it all. I've gone before you, it's going to be perfect. And they said, well, you know what, we think we should do it this way. We're going to send some guys in and and they can look at it and search out the cities and see where we need to be and all that. But God already said, all you got to do is go in and take it. And it's very important for us to think about the children of Israel today and think about our lives today. Verse 23, and the saying pleased me well, and I took 12 men of you and of a tribe. And they turned and went up into the mountain and came unto the valley of Eshcol and searched it out. And they took of the fruit of the land in their hands and brought it down unto us and brought us word again and said, It is a good land which the Lord our God doth give us. Notwithstanding, ye would not go up, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. And he murmured in your tents, how about that, inside closed doors or closed tents. They murmured, I don't think we should go. I'm not sure Moses knows what he's talking about. Does Moses, is, is Moses really, we, do we have to listen to him? I don't, I don't know. And they murmured 
and complained about it, and God heard it. And uh, it says, and he murmured in the tents and said, because the Lord hated us. He hath brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying the people is greater and taller than we, and the cities are great and walled up to heaven. Man, those, those walls are so high, they're up to heaven to them. And, and that's exaggerating right there. That's what people do. They exaggerate the problem. And moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakins there. Those were the giants. They said unto you, then, said, then I said unto you, Dread not, neither be afraid of them. The Lord your God, which goeth before you, he shall fight for you according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. And in the wilderness thou hast seen how that the Lord thy God bare thee as a man doth bear his son in all, in, in all the way that ye went until ye came into this place. Yet in this thing ye did not believe the Lord your God, who went with in the way before you to search you out a place to pitch your tents in and by fire by night and to show you by what way you should go and in a cloud by day. And the Lord heard the voice of your words and was wroth and swear, saying, Surely there shall not one of these men of this evil generation see the good land which I swear to give unto your fathers. Save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the, uh, he shall see it, and to him I will give the land that he hath trodden upon and his children because he hath wholly followed the Lord. Also the Lord was angry with me for your sakes. Got mad at Moses and saying, Thou shalt not go up there, go up in thither. But Joshua, the son of Nun, which standeth before thee, he shall go in thither. Encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Moreover, your little ones, which she, which she said should be a prey, and your, I'm sorry, moreover, your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, and your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in thither, and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn you and take your journey into the wilderness by the right by the way of the Red Sea. Then ye answer, look at it now. Then ye answered and said unto me, We have sinned against the Lord. And they had. We will go up and fight according to all that the Lord our God commanded us. And I thought that God said he'd already given it to them, that they were going to be hard, but they, that he was going to fight for them. And, and when he had girded on it, I'm sorry, and when ye had girded on every man his weapons of war, ye were ready to go up into the hill. And the Lord said unto me, saying to them, go not up, neither fight, for I am not among you, lest ye be smitten before your enemies. So I spake unto you, and ye would not hear, but rebelled against, rebelled against the Lord, against the commandment of the Lord, and went up presumptuously up into the hill. And ye would not hear. And the title of the message is pretty pretty simple. Do you have a listening ear? Are you hearing God? And and there's a couple of things I want to say today. And the Lord just kind of spoke to me in my reading of the Word. I don't have one note. But, I, but I, I tell you this, God, God has a message here for the church, for us. And I'm glad when I hear the voice of God and I do what he says. It's a wonderful life when he does that. I mean, you know, uh, I, there's a lot of things we have to listen to in this day. Uh, the other night, Madison and Brooklyn were in my house and uh, Dale and Cake, and they're all upstairs. And we heard a loud thump. Boom. And then we thought we heard crying. And all I can think of, my girls' beds are about this high. There's no bottom bunk. They just have top bunks. And I thought, oh, no. And Kara got up. I got mad. We ran up those stairs. And, and they were all laughing. And, and Dale drew down a, a dumbbell down the stairs. And that's awesome. And it made a loud thump. And uh, where's Dale at? He's back there. Uh, he drew down that dumbbell. But you know what? I, I listen for my kids. I always listen for them to see if I can, if they ever need anything. I listen for many things, but I've got to listen to God. Let's pray. I know you've been standing a long time, but we're going to be okay. 
Let's pray and ask God to bless. We'll have a song we'll preach through just for a few minutes on, on what God has given us. Father, we love you. And I thank you, Lord, for your love for us. I thank you, God, that you can do so many things. And I'm thankful, Lord, that you're unmovable. Our theme this year, and Lord, I know that you cannot be moved. But, Lord, I know that we can move you in a good way. And in a bad way. And so, Father, today, help us to glean from the Bible. Help us to understand the things that we need to understand. Help us to see what we need to see. And help us to not go up the hill presumptuously or arrogantly or, or thinking we know better or we've got this. Father, help us in this life that we live, the hills and the valleys that we'll be in, to trust you and to listen to you and i'm thankful god that you speak i'm thankful lord that you speak to all your children if they allow and if they listen father help us today we love you we need you today lord please in jesus name amen <laughs> You spread your light over the oceans, the starry night, the words you've spoken. You lace the field in brilliant color. You clothe the earth in endless wonder. And all the
cry that conquered our sin. There's none so lovely, Lord, there's none so lovely as you. Very interesting statement what God makes and the Bible makes in chapter 1, verse number 43. So I spake unto you, and ye would not hear. That title back there, Brother Dale. Uh, and, and, and so we have to think about this statement. It's a very, very interesting statement. And, and probably no less than 20 times in the Old Testament, God makes a close similar statement to you they had ears to hear but they would not hear and uh, the, it's very important that the church hears very important as a Christian that you hear the Lord and you uh, the word hear is a word that's intelligibly hear to hear and act upon it with obedience not just to hear it and not do it and, and when I was a kid my mother and father they would say things to me and, and, and give me instructions in certain things, and it, it, it just never, it didn't register sometimes. And I would do, do what I thought that I heard, uh, and then they'd say, you didn't listen. And I'd say, yes, I did. And, but I really didn't listen. I didn't get everything. And, and, and so the children of Israel, man, they, uh, they God, God rescued them and, and, and came and got them with some mighty, mighty miracles. You ought to read the first 15 chapters of Exodus and, and look at the, the plagues and the different things that God showed them with a mighty hand how he could rescue. And, 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 and Christians, we've seen some things. We've seen God do some mighty things in our life. How, how else do we wake up one day and decide that we just want to serve the Lord? And we don't want the old life anymore. And we want to put good things before us. And how else do we wake up one day and, and the cursing and the, 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 the nastiness of this life that people have bothers us. It only happens from a, some, from a transition or a transformation that can come from God. And, and so we see these things happen and we see many mighty miracles. And one of the greatest miracles God's ever done for me was save me. One of the next greatest miracles God's ever done for me was my parents saved them. And for my mom and dad or my mom's brothers and sisters. And, and we're praying for some of my other family members to get saved. And we think God can do it. And, and Amelia keeps that on the forefront of our minds, praying for my uncles and different folks and, and and so many great things a miracle that God changed us and gave us a new wants and new likes and and so many things and 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 listen he did that with salvation instantly we are transformed to be citizens of heaven we have a heavenly home we'll go to heaven when we die but the transformation of of growing in Christ and and when I got saved, I did not go home and hate cussing. I didn't. I, I didn't go home and hate drinking. I, I had a, a new light in me, and it was kind of a thing that I thought, well, you know, I, I, I've known for years. Before I got saved, I knew I shouldn't be drinking. I knew I shouldn't be cussing. I knew all that stuff. Shouldn't be acting up and whoremongering and all that. But through a relationship with the Lord and coming to church, in the beginning, church was what did it for me. And then diving into the in, infallible riches of the Word of God and starting to look at it and listen to it and started applying it to my life and still today applying it to my life it transforms me and is still transforming me to a point where I understand that God is mighty, that this just isn't some book, that this isn't religion, that this isn't just a place that did it for me, that you didn't do it for me, that Brother Weedo didn't do it for me, that the almighty hand of God could only have done for me what has been done, which is still changing me. I've not arrived. I've not, I often tell you this, not sure why I get the pastor, 
but 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 God is still moving on me and it has to do with what I have heard and what God has told me and how God has spoke to me in church services at home in my reading of the word driving down the road God has spoke to me not with a voice but in my inner heart I knew that God was leading me places and many times I had to have a cho- I had a choice to make will I do what God wants or will I not you do not know how close I was to not coming to Philadelphia because of fear of the unknown and not sure that this was going to work here. But I listened to him and I said, Lord, I'll go. You do not know how close these two were from not coming to Philadelphia because of the fear of the unknown and not knowing if it would work. But, and I'm not trying to lift us up or anything, not at all. I've often said anybody could do what I do. It's not, it, 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 this is just, I get to be. But listen, we, we listen. And this is many different decisions in this room that you've made through the years. Or even if you're a new Christian, you're making them now, little by little. And through the decisions you've made because you've heard God speak to you and allowed that to make a decision in your life to choose to go His way or your way. And I have to be honest with you, there have been many choices that I have made to go my way. And, and I, I, it's just the way it is. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've, I've made some bad decisions. But the more I think about God being unchangeable, unmovable, the more I think about that, the more I plant myself on that whole concept of of being true in my life and that God is what he is. And the closer I get to the Lord, I think about life is full of decisions constantly as a child of God every single day of our life. And we will hear or we will do or we will hear and not do. Some of mine are my devotional time. I can think of other things I really need to do. And if I'm not careful, I can pull off of it and I can go do them. And while I do them, I can say, Lord, I love you and I just thank you for this day. And Lord, I pray that you'd help me today. And and you know where my heart is, God. I ain't got time to get down there, but I do have time to get down there because I can get up earlier if I need to. Everybody here has time to get down with the Lord, by the way. If you don't have time to get down with the Lord, you're too busy and you need to pray God fire you from whatever you're doing. But so I I have decisions to make, and when I make those decisions the right way, I'm in his path, and I'm following him, and man, it is awesome. And and I have peace, inner peace. I have have the, the unchanging hand in my life, and I just think, man, this is great. There are still struggles. This morning, I, I struggled a little bit. My per- Something was wrong with me. I, I, I had a great morning with the Lord, read my Bible and prayed. And before I ever thought about the message today from the room studying, because I study every Sunday morning, I, I got into the Word for about 45 minutes, and I prayed for about 20, 25 minutes, and, and that was great. And there was just something lingering over me until I got here with you, and then God lifted it up with some music and different things, and, and, and there was no reason for it. So we do go through some things, and I'm not telling you, we're all moody in in a certain way, I'm sure. Some of us are moodier than others, And, 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 and I'm one of those. But the whole thing I want to say to you today is this. What we hear and what we do will transform our life. Do you have a listening ear? The children of Israel, they came out and God, it was not a coincidence to them that they got brought out of Egypt. Nothing could be marked up as a coincidence to them. And and the things that they saw and the things that we've seen in our Christian life cannot be marked up to coincidences. I think about Luke chapter number five when Peter 
said, I've been out fishing all night, and caught nothing. He said, no, let down your net. And, uh, and Peter lets it down, and, and they get a multitude of fishes. Man, and it, it's incredible. The ship starts to sink. And, and, and he says, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. You know, Peter didn't believe, and, 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 and when God showed him, he did it. And that, that often happens to me. I, I, I don't trust the Lord, but when I trust him, he takes care of things, and he does things. And so the children of Israel, they come out, and God says, listen, everywhere your feet tread, and then he, he, we didn't read it, but he marks it off. You can, you can put it on a map and see the area that he gives them. It is enormous. Israel today is about this big on a map. But God gave them about that much. They did not possess what God gave them and God told them that they could have. They heard it, but they would not listen. And we all know this, and we've said this plenty of times in this church. There's a difference between hearing and listening. You can hear something, but da, 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 da. but are you listening? And listening to the point where you're going to make the right decision. And so the children of Israel, they, they come out, and, 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 they, and then God says, I'm going to give you all this. All you got to do is go in, and then they go to him. And what I was reading to you was a recap. In Numbers chapter number 13 is where it all happened, and when we can see it, they go to him and said, listen, we don't need to go over there. Can we just get 12 people to go over there first and take a look at it? And Moses says, okay, all right, that's fine. Go ahead and do it. And they go over, they come back with these grapes and the grapes, the, 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 all the, the fruit of the land is great. There's milk and there's honey and there's, there's stuff and God, God's so good and it's wonderful. And, and there's 12 of them and 10 of them are like, no, they're too big. The walls are too big. They're going to get us. They're going to, then we can't do it. And Caleb and Joshua said, no, no, we can do it. And Caleb says, give me this mountain. Let me go. I'm, I'm ready to go. And, and they all said no. And, and then the people heard it. The Bible says the heart of the people melted. And so I want to say this to you. Now listen to me, mama, daddy, grandma, grandpa, uh, child of God, whoever you are in here. Your hearing and doing or your hearing and not doing will directly affect people everybody the youngest person in this room you're going to affect a lot of people today and quite frankly in the future of your life where God gives you more people but you'll affect people and and so the children of Israel they said you know I, it's too much we're not going to go and then you understand what happened they said no you know what we, we messed up. No, no, we'll go. And then God tells Moses, tell them not to go because I'm not going with them now. I will not go before them now. Tell them not to go. And Moses did, and they said, no, no, we're going. The Bible says they went up that hill presumptuously just thinking, well, we, you know, we, we should have listened to him. Let's just go. He'll be with us. And they go up that hill, man, and they get destroyed. They die. A lot of them die right there. And so there's just a couple of points I want to make to you today. When God says go, and you have a listening ear, and that can be go, do, say, be, have. He's got a great life for you, a great life. He's got something so wonderful for you. There are people sitting in this room who are so blessed and everybody in the room if you're saved you're blessed God, God's been real good to all of us there's some folks in here man that God has just done tremendous tremendous things in their life and then there's some folks in here that God wants to do some tremendous things in their life but they're just not listening they know see children of Israel knew we got to go up man we've seen all the miracles we got to go but they listened to everybody else and they started thinking about what everybody else was doing. Well, maybe, you know, I don't need to do it. And then God says, I'm not going. And so when God says go, you've got to have a listening ear and you've got to go or you've got to be or you've got to have or you've got to do or you've got to see or you've, you've got to have what he wants you to have because what he's got planned for you is incredible. An 11 day journey to the promised land from Egypt, and they spent 40 years 
in the wilderness of Egypt before they could go in until all those people died off, except for the young ones, the ones that didn't see good and evil, didn't understand yet. And, 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 and the Bible talks about 20 and under, and, and everybody else dies. And they let them go in. And Moses said, because you would not hear. And, and so it, when God says go, you've got to go. We got to listen to the word of God. We got to listen to God and listen to me. Everybody that's saved is hearing God and everybody that is saved has the Holy Spirit of God living inside of him. And, and listen to this. I know this without a doubt that every person that's saved, when, when you have a choice to make any choice in life, Anything that comes upon your plate, anything that comes into your life, right or wrong, you know, but you're not like, I don't know if it's right to do it. No, 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 that's, that's not true of the child of God. You know what the choice has to be, and if you don't make the right choice, you're not on the path God would have you to take. Now, thank God we live in an age of grace where God is very, gives us what we do not deserve. That's a wonderful thing. But we should not tread upon God, the Bible says, and just take that for granted and live, have a license to sin and do whatever we want. And sin, when I say sin here, I'm talking about sins of omission, not doing what you're supposed to do. I mean, the decisions that have been made in this room alone for the Lord Jesus Christ, listen to me now, the decisions that have been made in the past 12 years of the people in this room are a, the decisions that you made, not that you did, that you made are enough to change the whole world. The whole world. It'd be a different world. I'm included with you now. I'm, I'm in those decisions. I've been to this altar, made a decision, didn't keep it. Absolutely. I've been to this altar and, and said, God, I want you to help me. And I walk back to my seat, take my decision right back to the seat. But the decisions that have been made, you see, God says, it, he, he says in the book of Revelation about six times, six or seven times, he says, let the church hear what the Spirit said. Let me, let me read it to you. Revelation chapter number two. And you, you can turn there, and, and it's at several places. He's talking to church. He says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that hath an ear, let him hear. And so we, we hear God speaks. God tells us, listen, the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance, which means God's gifted you to make a decision. God's called you to make a decision. And when you make that decision, God doesn't take that back. He says, that's what I've called you to do. And that's what you're to do. And so, he said, well, God's not really been unmovable in my life. Well, how have you been doing with your listening ear? How about your part in it all? It would be great if God just picked us up, put us on a cloud the rest of our life and we did nothing. But you know what we would need after that? We wouldn't need God. We wouldn't care about God. And, and, and so the children of Israel, man, they, they didn't want it. He says, man, they had an ear. They didn't hear it. And they went up presumptuously into the hill. So, number one, if God calls you to go, you got to go. God calls you to do it, you got to do it. God calls you to be it, you got to be it. God calls you to see it, you got to see it. God calls you to say it, you got to say it. God calls you to hear it, you got to hear it. And, and, and listen, that's going to be a wonderful, wonderful thing. Parents, be honest. And, and I'm just going to say this. I don't always... Sometimes my kids don't do right and I don't do anything. I'll be honest with you about it. Okay, but most of the time, I want them to do what I say and what I've asked them to do. And they are not allowed to do this. Um, you know, I want you to take care of this for me. When I come home, I want you to have this done and, and make sure you get it done. Okay, listen, I'm not messing around. I want that done. And then I come into the house and they go, Oh, that's, I told you I'd do it, but I, 
kind of changed my mind. I'm not going to do it today. And, and I don't go, oh, that's okay. Here's grace. Just, there you go. That's all right. No problem. And, and, and no parent, listen, I'm just telling you, parents, that your yays be yays and your nays be nays. Consistency in a parent is the most important quality you can have. And I'm, I've, I'm trying to be consistent. I'm not saying I'm real consistent, but I'm, I'm more than I was. And so we would say as parents, yeah, no, no, my kids have to do right or there's a problem. And my, my discipline probably might be different from yours. My kids are they're getting older now, and there's le- fewer far between uh, the, the disciplinarian deals that go on in our house anymore and, and stuff like that. But they still have to have some form of punishment because that teaches them that life has consequences when you don't do right. Listen to me now. Very important to listen to when you don't do right, life has consequences. And if we don't teach them that by the time they're 18 and they go out of the home and they, there's no bit of consequence for them, it's going to take them a lot longer to grow up. The thing with God is the same way. Everything has consequences. I, I think about Brother Ito's friend, Tomas. Came to the church, man, he was a couple years ago or whatever, and, he, and, and Tomas was, was, he, he struggled with drugs. But man, he got, I believe, I believe 100% he got saved. He just, he, he, I looked him in the eyeballs, he said, I want it. And he struggled. He'd come there and there, miss, and then he stopped coming and he'd get out. And that heroin's a monster and he couldn't defeat it. And he overdosed the other day and died. And but he told, I know his heart was broken when he told me my heart was broken. I thought, man, doggone it. Ain't that. But there are consequences. And I hate that, and 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 I, and I pray he did get saved, and I believe he did, and 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 God's got him in heaven, and 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 thank God he, for that, for the promise of heaven, and, and God's grace. That's what grace is. God graces us. We're not under this this thing where He's just going to zap us and kill us and 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 put us in hell if we mess up. No, for His child, He's going to take care of us still. Even the worst consequence, God's still hand is hand still upon us. He he chasteneth every son whom he loveth. If you love your kids, you will chasten them. Just the Bible. Now you can argue or not. That's fine. It's the Bible. God teaches us that. And, and, and so you have to uh, understand that with, with not going up the hill, there were consequences for the children of Israel. And guys. We've got to focus on this. That's why God did this for us in this message. Real simple message, but we've got to understand that every decision in our life brings a consequence. And Brother Capace said it years ago, you have the right to choose, but you do not have the right to choose the consequences of your choice. And, and it's, 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 it's the way it is. And so I'm training you, son. Till when you grow up, when you leave this home, you can make it, buddy. And I've got to deal with this. I've got to help you. I love you, but there's consequences for not this. KK, there's consequences. Millie, there's consequences. Kara, the, never mind. Uh, there's consequences. There's consequences. And as a pastor, I'm just telling you, and listen, I, the, the most dangerous life in this room, I, I, I believe this with all my heart. The one that can go the worst and wrongest and mess up his life the easiest is me. I have not one person on the face of this earth to tell me what y'all have one boss on the face of the earth. But God, I thank God that I, I've somehow been able to keep getting right with him. I'm not saying I'm good, perfect, or great or anything, but I, but I have gotten right with the Lord. And I say that uh, uh, 100% that I keep getting right with him somehow. And that's a daily deal. But God gave me the position of the shepherd of the sheep. And you think about that. And that's what we that's what God did. And the sheep out and the they got the, the shepherd just didn't say, No, go outside that fence. It's okay. Whatever you want to do. Eat what you want. No, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Guess what that does? He restores my soul. Psalm 23. And so God's ways for us are so great and he'll speak to us and he speaks to us in here. And if we'll keep the decisions that we make and say, you know what? I made this decision for the Lord. 
He is important to me. He done so much for me. I'm going to keep my decision and I'm going to pray about it. When I start messing up, I'm going to get down and pray again. I'm going to say, God, help me, Lord, to, to keep my decision. I'm going to write them down, whatever it is. Because if you'll do what he says, man, he's got a great plan for you. But if you don't do what he says, his plan can't work for you. The plan that he has for you. He'll give you backup plans. I mean, that's what God, thank God, he's the God of the backup plan. Because I'm, I'm living in his backup plan most of the time because I've not taken the right one a lot. But this year, I said, Lord, I want to be a real Christian. Man, I know I've messed up. I understand that. I can have a bad attitude too. Look, look, if you think the past is supposed to be perfect, that, that's great. I, I wish I were. Pray for me more. Stop eating and pray for me, please. I would help if you fast and pray for me, but but I'll tell you this. I want to have his voice in my ear. He that hath the ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And, and so God's plan is for us to go when he tells us to go. God's plan is not for us to say no. No, he made us Christians. We're his children. He loves us. He's supernatural, and he has a way that is past any of our ways, and it works. It's, it, it, it is not ever going to fail. But often we put ourselves in this position of the wilderness. We have to wander. And in the wilderness, the, the Bible says that their shoes never wore. That their feet never got got messed up. Their shoes never never wore down for 40 years. He, he gave them manna in the wilderness. They'd wake up and there'd be these white coriander seeds all over the ground and they'd go out and gather it each day. They couldn't gather it for two days because it would, it, would, it would decay. They gathered every day and on Saturdays they'd get twice as much, or on Fridays they'd get twice as much because Saturday they couldn't do it. It was the Sabbath and he gave them food and he was taking care of them and guess what they said? Well, we want meat. I, me, yeah, we, we don't like this stuff. Your your plan, God. We want what we want. The God says, "Okay, you want what you want. I'm going to rain quails from heaven, from from the sky." And and I think the Bible says He rains quails about about three feet high on the ground all around them. And and they just started eating it. And while the meat was in their mouth, God took them because they lusted upon other things than God's plan. Now, there's nothing wrong with a good steak. I had one last night. Nothing wrong with doing good things in life. And as long as we're listening to the Lord, God does provide great things. I mean, we get to have good things in life sometimes just because of blessings. And I'm not saying we're all the same, but, but, we, but if we put God first, God will take care of it. But listen to me. It's got to be all. His word. Everything he wants. You got to do it. If he says do it, move and do it. Move and do it. Whatever it would be God wants you to do, do it. Make sure your kids know that you're doing it. Show them that you're doing it. And pray with them about doing it. I learned this. Everything I said my kids would never do when I, before I had kids, they do. I used to say my kids will never do that. And man, they do it. And so I've grown, hopefully, in the last 13 years with my kids to where I'm like, you know, not what I was 13 years ago. And, and, and I've learned that they, you just have to keep repeating a lot to your children. That's the way it is. That's the way I was. There's nothing wrong with them. They just, they just, you just keep on training, keep on training, keep on training. But, and, and God keeps on training. If he gives us grace, we mess up, we mess up. But listen, there's a difference in messing up and saying no. You see what I'm saying? Not, you know, Lord, I know I'm supposed to do this, but I'm not going to do it. And, and you know what? God knows. God understands that in your heart. He knows where you're at on that. But he desires for you to do it. He didn't give you the back door and just go ahead and sin. No, God wants you to do it. God, God, God has a plan for you to do it. God knows what you need, and you've got to listen to him. Take your Bibles and turn to Luke chapter number uh, 22 real quick. 
Luke 22, and we're, and we're done. I'll just give you this very quickly. Time flies in this place. Luke chapter number 22, in verse number 31, Jesus is getting ready to go up to the Garden of Gethsemane and pray for the last time, and Judas is going to bring the soldiers, and they're going to take Jesus into custody, and they're going to give him a mock trial and hang him on a cross the next day. And Jesus has been with Peter for three and a half years, and in Luke chapter number 22 and verse number 31, the Bible says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, that's Peter's real name, Behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Simon, Satan's after you. And he's going to sift you. You know what a sifter is? Some of you ladies know what it is. You, the thing with holes in it, you throw flour in there and you go like this and it makes it powdery. The sifter, the Satan hath desired to sift you like wheat, Simon. And then he says, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. That conversion is not salvation. He said, I pray that your faith fail not. He already had faith. He said, but when you get converted, what is he talking about there? When you get right with God, because you're going to blow it. I pray that you strengthen the brethren. And look what Simon says, verse 33. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. I ain't afraid of nothing, God. I can do it. As soon as they come and get, God tells me, he says, Peter, the crow is going to crow, or the, the crow is going to crow. The, the, the cock will crow before you deny, uh, after you deny me three times. And if you read down, you keep going. Peter said, I'll never deny it. He goes, they take God into uh, custody. Peter takes his sword and cuts the guy's ear off. Man, he's ready to fight. And God heals the guy, Malchus's ear, puts it back on. They take God into custody. Peter falls him afar off. And some lady comes up and says, hey, you're one of them. He goes, no, I ain't. No, I'm not. He's denying God. This does it again. The third time he starts cussing. No, I am. Da, 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 da. And, and, and then all of a sudden, the cock crowed. And then Jesus looks at Peter. Right in Peter's eyes, right at that moment. Peter remembered what God said. And he said, I fail God. But then the lovely thing is, I ain't got time to get into it. When Jesus resurrected, he told Mary, go tell Peter and the disciples that I'm alive. Why did he say go tell Peter? I think it's a beautiful story. Grace. Hey, go tell Peter. When I knew that I told him Satan was going to sift him, desire to sift. Now, could Peter have made a choice there? Yes, he could have. Peter could have said, but God already knows the future. Remember, just like it was yesterday. He already saw it. And Peter could have said, all right, Lord, would you pray for me? I don't, I don't want to do that, God. What, what do I need to do, Lord? Peter said, nah, I, I got this. And it's no big deal. But God says, go get Peter. And so today, listen, God says that to you. I mean, the decisions you've made are not, I didn't tell you that to depress anybody. Man, I, I, I really, I, I tried to change the message with the songs. I thought, I'm going to preach something fired up. I'm come back to this later. And I started reading my Bible as fast as I could, John 14. Uh, in my house, there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place. I thought, because I read that this morning. I'm like, I can preach on that right now. God's coming back. We're going to leave happy. And then I sat back down and God said, no, that's not it. And I'm not down on you today. I'm just saying, listen, life's full of decisions. We teach our kids that for the first 18 years. Decide the decisions you make will, will hamper you. If you and I'm, I'm dealing with decisions from when I was 11 and 13 and 15 still today. And, 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 and our kids, are, none of our kids in here are perfect. None of them, man. All our kids are messed up at times. But we just keep training, keep training, keep training. We don't allow that to, to, to make bad decisions. And we, we chase them when we have to. We don't just let them. A child left to himself will destroy himself. God says the same thing. If I leave you to yourself, you destroy yourself. And so just come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, all ye that are laboring, and, and, and I will give you rest. He said, uh, uh, then, then after that, he says, I, in, in me you shall find rest. You get rest at salvation, but you'll find rest by obeying the Lord 
and saying, whatever your word says, what you, what God has told you in your mind today as you listen to me preach and tell these stories, he's told you some things that you're supposed to do, said you would do, or, or, or whatever. Hey, why don't you just come back? Because God's right now saying, go tell Peter, the, the, the disciples that I've resurrected. Go tell them I got them. I, grace, great. That's the wonderful thing about this Bible. We get grace. And God says, I'll give you what you don't deserve. I'll give you what you don't deserve. I'll give you what you don't deserve. And you come down and you say, Lord, I agree with you. It ain't confessing sins. Confessing sins in the New Testament is not talking about going into a booth and telling God what you did. It's talking about agreeing with God on what he says is right. Because he already knows what you did. He don't need the list. He knows. You just got to agree. Lord, I've been down. I've been doing wrong. I've been, I've gave up. I've, 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 I've stopped. I've, I've done this. I've got scared. I've frustrated. I, I haven't done I did, I did, I did. Well, all the things that, that we could say. God's right there waiting. And God wants to be there for you. And you have ears to hear. Preach the message out of Revelation two years ago. They had ears to hear but would not hear. The church has ears to hear. And if you don't hear, people out there aren't going to get saved. If you don't hear it and do something about it, they're all going to die and go to hell. And God chose the church to reach them. That's not the message. The message today is we've got to hear the Lord. We've got to hear what God wants, the authorities God has put in our life. You young people, God put, you, God put me in your life. So, well, you've messed up a lot. Well, that's okay. You have too. We, we, I, I'm, I'm fine with that. I know I've messed up plenty of times. But I'll tell you this. We've got the word and God to steer us and help us in the decisions he makes. Folks, I'm not saying anybody in here, but God's told some people in Christianity to quit what they do and do something else. And they couldn't do it. God's called, I, I go to churches all the time through this whole country, and there are men sitting in those churches God called to preach. And they, they marked it off as a day that was just emotional, and that was the decision I made. I said it, but it really wasn't true. And, and they're not doing what God told them to do, and they regret it. I came to Philly because I didn't want to regret not coming because I would have bought my whole life, and I should have went. I should have went. And I came scared and said, God, you've got to help us. I told some of the stories last night about the things happening in that house over there before we started. And yeah, thank God he came. Thank God he helps. He'll supply the way. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Heads bowed and eyes closed. God spoke to you today. You ought to speak to him. There's decisions you need to make. You need to make them. Be real with the Lord. He knows the decisions he wants you to make. You know the decisions. Don't allow your mind to be idle in the house of God and not talk to the Lord who gave his life for you. And if you're in here today and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, listen, you may have been coming to this church your whole life. But look, if you don't have the settled God living inside of you, and there may be people here that don't care. But listen, God loves you. Die for you. Even if you, you don't care, he cares about you. If you need to be saved, you need to come down. Let's take a Bible and show you. You need to get right with God. You need to get right with God. Hey, there's no time like this time to live for the Lord. If you're in here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, can I pray for you? Would you slip your hand up right now and say, Preacher, pray for me. Here's my hand. Anybody like that? Just slip it up right now where I can see it. Heads bowed and eyes closed. If God spoke to your heart, you ought to talk to him. Father, I pray that you bless the invitation. Now, Lord, we love you so much, and without you, we cannot make it. Help us, Lord, to, to make sure we hear your voice, and we do what you say, and we do not wind up wandering in the wilderness of Christianity our whole life, not getting the good stuff that you intended for us to have. Bless it now, in Jesus' name, amen. You can come to the altar if you'd like to. Folks are already here praying. Pray in your scene. If you don't know the Lord and, and you didn't raise your hand, I'd love to talk to you after the service. There's nothing like God. Never experienced anything like Him. I'm thankful, and I say this often, and you ought to, you ought to repeat this to yourself often too. I'm thankful that I didn't get religion. I'm thankful that I didn't get dead religion that avails to nothing. I got the Lord and he changed my life. Now I realize everybody in the room, God hasn't, is not important to everybody sometimes. I hate that. 
But this thing of grace, don't mistake what you have for salvation because you prayed a prayer and you don't care about God inside. You didn't get God. God does not live inside of you and is so big that, that he's so big that if he lived inside of you, there'd be something different about you. Nobody ever got Jesus and nothing happened. You ain't interested in God. I don't care how many prayers you pray. There ain't nothing in the Bible says pray a prayer and you get saved. He says, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The heart. That's a scary thing. I want to I do what I, all the, every decision God has given me. I want to keep them. And I've failed many times. But I want that sweet, sweet fellowship with the Holy Spirit of God in my life throughout the day. I want to know when I pray that he's listening right away. That I ain't got to spend 15 minutes trying to uh, confess and get right with him. Hey, listen, if you're regarding iniquity in your heart, if you're allowing sin to be there and you're not taking care of it, everybody look at me now. If you're allowing sin in your heart and you're not taking care of it, God does not hear your prayer. That is the Bible. You ain't talking to him. That's why you have to confess your sins to be able to get God to listen to your prayer. That's his word. Many people regard stuff in there. They allow it. They, they don't get rid of it. And God's not listening. You can pray. You can pray eloquently. I want to know when I close my eyes right now and I start talking to the Lord that he's there. I've not always been that way. I mean, I've always, and I'm, I'm messed up. But I want to get close to him and remain close to him and have him. And I want to do what he says. I'm thinking the other day, I'm looking forward to getting that building finished, getting that church started. What are you going to do then? Start looking for some property outside of the city, man, to put that lady's home. How are we going to do all that? Same way we've done all this. God, he's got to do it. I, I thought, man, that's the first thing I'm going to do is start looking for something to buy. How are you going to buy it? I don't really know all those answers. I know that God wants a lady's home outside the city with us running it, helping them. We haven't started the church yet. I know, but you know what? I just felt like that. God was telling me that the other day. Very important. Father, we love you. Thank you for the word. Thank you for meeting with us today. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your, 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 the hope that you bring to our life. Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, that when we mess up, we have a Father that's full of compassion. And it's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. For your compassions fail not. You tell us that in Lamentations 3. Lord, I'm thankful for your compassion. I'm thankful, Lord, that I'm a wreck, God, and I've not arrived. I'm just telling everybody in this room, Lord, that I want to live for you, and I'm trying every day. God, I hope to God I don't have to come in here on Wednesday and pretend like I'm walking with you, that I can say, no, I met with God every day. And the days I didn't, I talked to him, and I, I said, God, help me. Lord, help me not to intentionally take the wrong road often. I know that we all choose to go the wrong way, but Lord, help us to make good choices, better choices. On one sinner, try to tell another sinner how to sin less, Lord. Help us today, God. We need you. Thank you for the word. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for Peter. Man, thank you for that, God. I'm so delighted to find out he said, go get Peter. What a blessing. So delighted that he knew Peter would be sifted. He knew Satan would tempt him. That he'd have an ego problem and an uh, uh, arrogancy problem. And that he would stand one day in Jerusalem and preach. And three and five thousand would be saved. And lives would be changed. And, and he, he'd spend his life telling, you about, telling people about Jesus and die a ripe old man. Lord, Father, I love you. We need you. Help us now follow your lead. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we'll meet back here tonight. Choir at 4.30. Hope you'll come. We got uh, coffee and cookies and all that stuff. And listen to me. Everybody look up here. Some of y'all are supposed to be singing in the choir and y'all are not. Y'all ought to be doing that. 
So I don't, I'm not going to do it because you said it. That's okay. I, but I, I would do it if God told me to do it. Uh, he wants you to be in there singing in that choir, living for the Lord. God bless you.